we'll keep going with part B of that example. So again, the idea is to identify any x values where the function is discontinuous. And we'll even go a step further and name which type of discontinuity. And once we know where it's discontinuous, then we can state the intervals uh, everywhere else where it is continuous. So now we're not given a graph, so that definitely makes things more challenging. We have this rational function, f of x equals x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. OK, so how are we going to identify where this is discontinuous if we don't have a graph? And well, uh, you know, one thing, if you have a rational function, then right, a natural question is, well, when is your denominator equal 0? Because if your denominator equals 0, we know something, something funny is going on. right? Maybe there's a vertical asymptote. Maybe there's a hole. So let's look into this. And so that's the question, uh, where does our denominator equal 0? So we're just going to set that equal to 0. And this one, x squared minus 2x minus 3, factors nicely for us. Uh, x minus 3 and x plus 1. And so we get the two solutions at x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. OK, so we know right away that it's at these two x values where our function is discontinuous. But let's go a step further. Uh, which, what type of discontinuity um, is going on at each one? It turns out there's two different types. Well, to answer that, uh, we need to think about the limit. So here's um, my work for x equaling 3. So I'm going to look at what's the limit as x approaches 3 for my function. And all I need to do is attempt to plug in. I don't actually need to find the answer. I just need to identify what's going on there graphically. So if I attempted to plug in, well, I'd have 0 on top. And even the denominator, well, I know that that's giving 0 too, because that's one of those solutions, right? Uh, 9 minus 6 minus 3 if I plugged in. So plugging in 3 would give me 0 over 0. And we know that that is a hole. And if you remember, a hole is just where one point has been plucked out. So that's going to be a removable discontinuity happening at 3. OK, so that takes care of 3. How about negative 1? Well, if I look at the limit as x approaches negative 1, and really, I don't have to get that answer. I just need to plug in the negative 1 to tell. And if I do that, well, I'll have negative 4 on top. I will have 0 in the denominator, so negative 4 over 0. If I get a number, some other number than 0, over 0, I know that that's a vertical asymptote. If it's a vertical asymptote, you may recall that's an infinite discontinuity. And so I can say that without actually seeing the graph, that it's discontinuous at 3, it was removable, and at x equals negative 1, it was infinite. And so then if I wanted to state where this function is continuous, well, it's just everywhere else. And so this would be continuous from negative infinity up to that first value, you know, negative 1, then from negative 1 to 3, and got my unions, union 3 to infinity. OK. It's a little bit harder, for sure. A little bit more investigative work. It's not just uh, visual. OK, I've got one more of this type before we move on to other points of discussion with continuity. How about this piecewise function? So I probably said it uh, in a previous video, but if I didn't, then I should definitely say it. Uh, a lot of times students are uncomfortable with piecewise functions. Pretty sure I did say that before. Well. OK, let's see how this plays out. We'll know, uh, let's see, g of x, it's 1 minus x if x is less than or equal to 0. And then it turns into e to the x 
for x greater greater than zero. Okay. Uh, what's nice is we don't have to graph this. It wouldn't be too bad if we did have to graph it, um, but we can answer this question without any graphing. If we're thinking about, hey, where might this function be discontinuous? You think, well, on their own, 1 minus x, I mean, everything's okay. Um, it's all just, it's just a line, right? I, it's actually got a, a negative slope, right? You know, it's just this nice, smooth line. Um, there's no holes or jumps, okay? It's going to continue on that line up until 0 and equaling 0. Then it's going to turn into e to the x. And if you remember the graph of e to the x, it's this exponential growth, right, shooting up. Again, no holes, no uh, vertical asymptotes or jumps. So each of them on their own are continuous everywhere. The one point in question is that transition moment. Okay, when it transitions from one to the other, um, is it still continuous where it makes that exchange, right, when we pass through zero? So all we need to do is investigate where that, where that switch occurs. The only x value in question is x equals zero. Is it continuous there? So here's what we're going to ask. Well, there's the definition of continuity. Does the limit as x approaches 0 for our function, equal the function value at 0, g of 0. Are those two the same? If they are, then we know it's continuous. Um, if they're not, we know it's discontinuous. OK. Well, let's see. I'm going to start by looking at g of 0. OK. So I've got this arrow going down. Let's figure out this one. That's just the simpler of the two, and then we'll worry about the limit. Let's see, g of 0. Well, if I was to look at g of 0, how would I compute that? So if I think of my piecewise, I'm, I'm plugging in 0, so I need to choose the piece where it's allowed to equal 0. All right? So g of 0, I need to use that piece right there, because that's when I equal 0. OK, perfect. So g of 0, uh, plugging it in, 1 minus 0, g of 0 equals 1. Looks good. Now let's investigate the limit. If the limit turns out to equal 1, then, then we're, we're set. The limit here, though, is a little bit more challenging. Because we've got a piecewise function, I can't just, you know, attempt to plug zero in, you know, to one thing and see what happens. Um, I need to look at the left limit and the right limit uh, around zero because it behaves according to this piece if I'm less than zero, but then it turns into this piece if I'm bigger than zero. So here's what we're going to do. Kind of push this down a little bit. Okay, hopefully I can fit all this on the screen. Looking at the left limit on the left side, x approaches 0 from the left. On the left side of 0, that's when I'm a little bit less than 0, so I'm going to use that. And if I plug in 0, I get 1. Well, that's no surprise. That's what happened back here. Now I need to look at the right side. And, well, you can see all my work there. No problem. As x approaches 0 from the right side for my function, well, then I need to choose the piece where x is a little bit bigger than 0, because I'm on the right side. So I'll take e to the x. Plugging 0 into that, well, hey, isn't e to the 0? That's equal to 1 as well, isn't it? This is great news. So the left limit came out to be 1. The right limit, which it uses the other function, also came out to be 1. So on the left side, the left side limit is equal to the right side limit. So I can say that the limit as x approaches 0, the two-sided limit of my function, is equal to 1, because that's what both of these came out as. And even more, my limit equals 1. And a moment ago, we got g of 0 equals 1. And so it turns out 
this function is continuous at 1. Even though it's piecewise and there seems to be this transition happening and, and possibly a jump going on there at 0, turns out they line up perfectly um, and this works out. If I didn't graph it on my original lecture notes, but I, I think it might be helpful. So if we were to graph that, right, it was g of x, 1 minus x here, and e to the x, x greater than 0. 1 minus x, that passes through, uh, it's got a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of negative 1, so it comes down like this. Okay. Then e to the x picks it up right there, and it would come and curve upwards, but it's just going to begin right there and start to curve. And so they come together right there at 1, and it is continuous. There's no jump happening. Okay, well, what does that mean for our answers? Well, we're just going to say it's discontinuous nowhere or none which means it's continuous everywhere from negative infinity to infinity. It's always continuous. Okay, let's stop this video here. More to come.